century ago, gold was discovered in these hills, yet few of the men who answered the rice to the gold field ever struck it rich. Life was difficult, and the cold and silence of winter drove many to warmer climates. In the Wasatch at times, it was so cold and quiet you could hear a horse walking two miles away. Very little has changed since then. You can still hear horses walking, but now there's a blending of old western charm and modern fashion. Here today, a man is judged not by how many yards of ore he's dug in a day or how quick he can draw a gun, but rather how well he can turn a pair of skis. Penny Patu, Art Fur, and Roger Staub have to be judged expert. 10,000 people once lived in this town, and millions in gold and silver was mined from beneath its streets. Today, miners stubbornly cling to their old methods, jealously hoarding those old dry claims in the vain hope that the price of yellow gold will rise. And once again, they can have those great parties in the big house on the hill. If only they could recognize the white gold of winter. Instead, snow is sworn at by the old timers as they shovel it from their doorstep. For you see, snow is a paradox. For many who live here, it is work. Yet for these strangers in town, it's a complete way of life. Snow has brought fame, fortune, and fun to Art, Roger, and Penny Patu. Penny, in addition to winning two Olympic medals, is one of the few women honored in America's Ski Hall of Fame. You see, powder snow skiing, of course, is something very new for me. When I raced, I stayed as far away from powder as possible. I, I come from these skis, and I always skied on very icy slopes. I'm more comfortable where I know I can stop fast. My forte was always downhill. It was never, uh, you know, turning. I learned to turn, I guess, two years after I made my first international team. In the old days, no one took lessons. You just learned to ski uh, as a child. And uh, if you went fast enough and, and stood up from the start to the finish, you made, it, you made the team. And then when uh, you go to Europe, when I went to Europe, I found that I skied well enough to beat most of the Europeans. And so there was no need for me to go and take uh, technique lessons. I learned how to ski properly after uh, the Olympics when I started running the ski school. But uh, there's so little challenge, especially for men, men. You know, I mean, there's challenge in business, I suppose, and uh, so forth. But there is no physical challenge, or very little of it. And this is where a man can feel like a man. But uh, for me, powder is uh, at once exhilarating and in the next moment, tremendously frightening. Because uh, there's, you're really um, on the verge of disaster, at least I am, because I'm not sure of myself on it, uh, at all times. I mean, once I get the feeling of it, I, I, you know, I make two or three turns and I think, wow, this is great. And then suddenly, there'll be a drop off or something and I'll have to be more forward or more back or something. And I'm, and I'm off it again. I feel exhilarated if I get down the hill while I'm falling. At this point, Arthur and Roger feel more, you know, they want something steeper and rougher and more gorgeous to ski through and deeper. You know, they're always looking for a bigger and bigger challenge. I'm, I'm looking just to, uh, as I say, make it to the bottom. And uh, there is also uh, uh, the matter of uh, man against the mountain out here, which we don't have in the east. We have man against man, man fighting each other in the lift line. Just think, all of this is an easy 300-mile, four-hour drive from downtown New York City. Once here, you can play your own pro football game on Sunday.
skiers from all over the world. Skiers like Penny, Roger, and Art Furr. Art has dramatically changed the contemporary ski scene by taking the seriousness out of skiing and replacing it with fun. And laugh at himself as well as the sport has made Art world famous. The top skiers of the world thought that uh, veddling is the ultimate of skiing. And you saw skiing, the whole house there was wiggling, wiggling. Every Swiss was wiggling, wiggling. And I said to myself, if this is the last thing in skiing, skiing is pushed in, in a terrible corner. Skiing should be a free sport. Uh, playing on skis is my philosophy. Nobody in the world ever proved to me that you can ski only on the downhill ski, or you can ski only by having the weight on the outside ski of the turn. If you ski in perfect dynamic balance, you can get any ski you want. But you are in perfect balance. If you are not in perfect balance, you blow up. The basics of trick skiing is staying in dynamic balance. So it doesn't make a damn difference to be in pack or in powder. If I go down exhibition slope, I feel great. I feel my skis. I feel my body, but I my eyes are in the terrain. I see moguls, I see flat spots, and you see this, and you make up your mind in your little computer. If you hit it, if the timing is right, that's the greatest feeling of skiing. Now, in powder snow, it's different. Powder snow, it's the feeling in powder snow is bouncing. It's weightless. Air, snow, and you bounce in it. And you become almost basically like going to the moon. And that feeling of floating really comes through beautifully in powder snow, more than in mobile. But in the powder snow, you don't have to plan precisely. It's a float. It's, a, it's an experience by floating to this bottomless stuff. Almost a century ago, the chant of the Gandhi dancer rang out as twin rails of steel changed the face of the West. Once, 10,000 people lived here and millions in yellow, gold, and silver was noisily brought to the surface. Now, the village lies quiet, save for the crunch of boots on snow. Ski boots of men and here here to try Utah's fabled powder snow slopes. These boots belong to Roger Staub, nine-time Swiss national champion and gold medal winner in the Olympics. I'm still a child when it comes to, to playing, no matter what it is, on skis or, on, on, you know, I like to 
play games. I like to play games with a friend or something like that. And uh, we do that a lot. You and, I, you and I play a lot together, you know, run around the, the apartment, and we do all kinds of games together. And he is very, very fond of that. You know, he loves to, he loves to play. The reason I had him out on skis is to give him another toy. I'm a, a very strong believer that uh, skis for children, they should be toys. They sh it shouldn't be a something they have to learn on it. Now for, for Yuri, it's, it could be a ball, but it just happens that he, that he has a pair of little tiny skis. He plays with them. And there, there it shows, you know, it's not always uh, when you start, it's probably the, more the question how you start. So. Very typical uh, situation I grew up. My father was a, a ski instructor and my mother worked as a, as a gaudrobier. Skis to me become like I still I like skiing. I, I like skiing very much, and, and uh, very many times I, I love skiing. I, I'm in love with skiing many, many times. And... <laughs> I'm sure it, it, it gives him a, a complete freedom. He can make his turn wherever he wants to. He doesn't have to uh, 
He's not concentrated into a course or to a court like tennis or, or to a game or to rules or anything. I mean, he just can make his turn wherever he likes to make his turn. He has complete freedom. Uh, he can uh, he can express himself by doing this or this.